right? So we understand through the scripture that the nature of sin is totally eradicated through one, one offering. The sin nature is put away. It was a comparison that was bringing forth. If you see the scripture before, in the same chapter, you will find it's talking about the sin that was covered, the sin nature that was covered. Okay, another scripture also in chapter number 10 again, the same book, chapter number 10, and verse number 10, by the which, by the which, will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Christ, of Jesus Christ, once for all. By which we find that we are sanctified, set apart, made holy, made right with God, sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Once for all. Verse 11. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which cannot which can never take away sins. That sin nature could have never been taken away. That sin nature would have never been taken away by the priests that stood before the Ark of the Covenant, went into the holiest of holies, which was the earthly tabernacle. But Jesus was born of the heavenly tabernacle, and the earthly tabernacle was of the type of the heavenly tabernacle, but the earthly could not, but the heavenly could. That's why Jesus said, if you, if you destroy this temple, in three days I shall build it. What was he talking about? He was talking about his death, burial, and resurrection. Death, burial, and resurrection. He was he wants to be raised. He wants to be raised to bring man to perfect salvation. Every priest stand a daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifice which, never, which can never take away the sins. But we found that Jesus was once and for all offered to take away the sins and take away the sins altogether. By this man... Who? Jesus Christ. He became man. The perfect sacrifice. The son of God. He was the son of man. By this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sin forever. One sacrifice for sins forever. One sacrifice for all sins forever. Sat down on the right hand of God. Sat down. The work is finished. That's why he sat down at the right hand side of the Father. Jesus, the perfect sacrifice, the Lamb of God that took away the sin of the world, sat, he seated there at the right hand side of the Father. If he sat, the work is over. So none of our sacrifices are ever going to prove anything better in our life than what he has already accomplished and already he has said at the right hand side. Nobody sits until the work is done. Jesus is seated at the right hand side of the Father. He's seated at the right hand side of the Father interceding for the world. The mediator, the man Christ Jesus, he's still the man Christ Jesus interceding for us that we might be saved to the uttermost saved to the uttermost enjoy every good benefit that is in salvation enjoy every benefit that is in salvation he is seated at the right hand side of the father in hebrews 7:25 he says he intercedes for us seated at the right hand side of the father he intercedes for us the salvation is to the uttermost. Salvation to the uttermost. Let me read that scripture and we'll come back to this same scripture again. 
Hebrews chapter 7 and verse number 25. Wherefore he is able to save them to the uttermost. Every one of us who believe that Jesus is Lord and confess with our mouth that God, ra God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. He is able to save them to the uttermost. Entirely. Forevermore. Nothing left. Not at all. Nothing left of the past. Save us to the uttermost. That come unto God by him. See he ever liveth to make intercession for them. He is the one who intercedes for us. Seated at the right hand side of the father. Ever liveth. He lives for one purpose. Until this age is over. That every one of us. Here's the gospel. Every tribe, every person, here's the good news that Jesus died for them. He doesn't waste a sweat of blood no more. He doesn't, he doesn't waste a drop of blood no more because he has spilt his blood for the whole wide world, for every generation. He doesn't have to no more suffer. No more go to the cross. He's already paid the price in full. No more suffer. Let's go to the book again in Hebrews chapter 10 and verse number 13. From henceforth expecting, from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. Every one of us who are saved born again, spirit-filled, children of the Most High God, born from above, he's looking forward for us to bring his enemies under our feet. That's what it says here. From henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. The church is the body of Christ. And Jesus is the head. And where do you think the feet is? At the bottom. So he wants us to bring all his enemies under our feet. The feet of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Who are his enemies? Sin, sickness, and poverty. Every one of us, within these three categories, we will find all misery. And he wants us to bring it. He's waiting. He's expecting us to use his authority of the new birth that we have. That you have been given the new birth. And using that authority, bringing the enemies under our feet. While people keep praying, Lord, please come down and do something for me. He's saying, I have, I'm waiting for you to do it. I'm waiting for you. To bring down those enemies and bring them under your feet. That's my feet. The body of Christ. We are the body of Christ put together. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's only one church. There's only one worldwide church. That is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we are the body. Members in particular. That's what the word says. And he expects us to do it. Let me show you that scripture. Quickly we come back to this in second or first Corinthians chapter 14. First Corinthians chapter number 12. First Corinthians chapter number 12. First Corinthians chapter number 12 and verse number 27. Now, didn't say sometime later, now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. Now, you are the body of Christ and members in particular. So when you look at a body, where is the feet? Below. So he wants all his enemies under his footstool. He is the head and we are the body. We are the body of Christ and Jesus Christ is the head of the church. So if he is the head of the church, he expects his body to line up with all his commands, all his words that we use, that we use and take authority 
over principalities and powers and rulers of darkness and take authority over the works of the enemy and bring them under our feet. Another scripture quickly. Go with me to the book of Ephesians chapter number 1 and verse number 21. Far above principalities and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world but also in that which is to come. Verse 22. And had put all things under his feet. What is his feet? The church, the body of Christ. And had put all things according to, I mean, according to his eyes, demons have no authority. So in his eyes, Every devil, every demon spirit must be under the feet of the church. But the church needs to wake up to the truth that they are new creatures in Christ. And they have the authority and the power over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt them. But the church has not risen to that level. The church says, it's all right. What is to happen will happen. And let people live in fear and trembling and had put all things under his feet according to his eyes in his eyes all things are under his feet and he's expecting us to work this thing out for him he destroyed the power of darkness he died on the cross and he rose again on the third day and he has the keys of death and hell what, he, what does he want us to do bring all powers under the feet of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ and gave him to be the head over all the church and gave him to be the head God gave Jesus to be the head over all things to the church which is his body the fullness of him that filleth all in all you and I are the body of Christ members in particular and he is the head of the church God is appointed and he wants the new man to rule and reign. The new man to rule and reign. And let the devil know that the new man knows that he is no longer a slave to sin, sickness, disease or poverty. Or any such thing that really brings you into a place of bondage where you don't have any authority. Where you live in misery land. No, you don't live in misery land. It may be misery land that you live in, but you are living in the kingdom of God. You're a child of the most high God, so you have all authority over principalities and powers and rulers of darkness. That's what the Bible says. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through pulling down strongholds. Mighty through pulling down strongholds. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Why waste time in arguing? Why waste time in trying to fight flesh and blood? Because that's not our battle really. Our battle is not against flesh and blood, but our battle is with principalities and powers and rulers of darkness, bringing everyone under our feet. Bring everything under our feet. Quickly we read from Hebrews chapter 10 and verse number 13. From henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering he had perfected. By one offering he had perfected. By one offering he has perfected or he has completed. By one offering. Forever them that are sanctified. By one offering has he cleansed. By one offering. Why do we waste time trying to cleanse ourselves with things that do not cleanse us? Many people waste a lot of time trying to cleanse them while they have already been cleansed and God wants them to work the works of God through the body of Christ. Each and every one of us are saved to the uttermost, made complete, 
sanctified. Why would you let the devil just come over your shoulder and tell you and talk to you and whisper into your ear? Condemnation, guilt, shame, put you and make you or belittle you when you know that you are the child of the Most High God. When you know that you are the body of Christ, you are a member in particular. And you have all authority and power over all the power of the enemy. Oh, we don't have any power. You have authority. When you speak a word out of your mouth, when you speak the word of God out of your mouth as if a sword that goes out of your mouth. Because if you see the scripture that says out of his mouth went forth a sword which was sharper than any two-edged sword. So when you speak out of your mouth his word, it is sharper than any two-edged sword. It's quick and powerful. It's life-giving and powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword. Speak the word and win every battle in life. Don't let the devil just crush you over. Don't let fearful thoughts come into your life because God has not given you a spirit of fear. But he has given you a spirit of power, spirit of love. He has given you a soundness of mind. And he has given you all authority over all the power of the enemy. And why do I have to fear? Why do I live in fear? Father God, I pray in Jesus' name. This day and this night, we believe that your grace has brought us into salvation, teaching us godliness and to refuse ungodliness, enabling us to live for the glory of God. You have blessed us and honored us to live for the glory which is manifesting in and through our lives. We, the children of God, doing the works of Christ. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.